Chapter 11. Awakening. On the other side of the clearing, where the nutcracking man had been at work, was the last nut, half as high as Tiffany, and it was rocking gently. The cracker took a swipe at it with the hammer and it rolled out of the way. See what's really there, said Tiffany to herself, and laughed. The Queen gave her a puzzled look. You find this funny? she demanded. What's funny about this? What is amusing about this situation? I just had a funny thought, said Tiffany. The Queen glared, as people without a sense of humour do when they're confronted with a smile. You're not very clever, thought Tiffany. You've never needed to be. You can get what you want just by dreaming it. You believe in your dreams, so you never have to think. She turned and whispered to Roland. Crack the nut. Don't worry about what I do. Crack the nut. The boy looked at her blankly. What did you say to him? snapped the Queen. I said goodbye, said Tiffany, holding on tightly to her brother. I'm not handing my brother over, no matter what you do. Do you know what colour your insides are? said the Queen. Tiffany shook her head neatly. Well, now you'll find out, said the Queen, smiling sweetly. You're not powerful enough to do anything like that, said Tiffany. You know, you are right, said the Queen. That kind of physical magic is indeed very hard, but I can make you think I've done the most terrible things, and that little girl is all I need to do. Would you like to beg for mercy now? You may not be able to later. Tiffany paused. No, she said at last. I don't think I will. The Queen leaned down. Her grey eyes filled Tiffany's world. People here will remember this for a long time, she said. I hope so, said Tiffany. Crack the nut. For a moment the Queen looked puzzled again. She was not good at dealing with sudden changes. What? Huh? Oh, right, muttered Roland. What did you say to him? Queen demanded as the boy ran towards the hammer man. Tiffany kicked her on the leg. It wasn't a witch thing. It was so nine years old and she wished she could have thought of something better. On the other hand, she had hard boots and it was a good kick. The Queen shook her. Why did you do that? She said. Why won't you do what I say? Everyone could be so happy if only they'd do what I say. Tiffany stared at the woman's face. The eyes were grey now, but the pupils were like silver mirrors. I know what you are, said her third thought. You're something that's never learned anything. You don't know anything about people. You're just a child that's got old. What a sweetie, she whispered. There was a shout behind her. She twisted in the Queen's grip and saw Roland fighting for the hammer. As she watched, he turned desperately and raised the heavy thing over his head, knocking over the elf behind him. The Queen pulled her round savagely as the hammer fell. Sweetie, she hissed, I'll show you sweet. Grothens, that's a Quinn, and she's got a gilder, the old doffer. Nay, Quinn, nay, lord, we free men. I could murder a kebab. Get her! Tiffany might have been the only person in all the worlds that there are to be happy to hear the sound of the Nakamak feeble. They poured out of the smash nut. Some were still wearing bow ties, some were back in their kilts, but they were all in a fighting mood, and save time were fighting each with one another to get up to speed. The clearing cleared. Real or dreams, the people could see trouble when it rolled towards them in a roaring, cursing red and blue tide. Tiffany ducked out of the Queen's grasp and still holding Wentworth hurried into the grasses to watch. Big Yan ran past, carrying a struggling full-sized elf over his head. Then he stopped suddenly and tossed it high over the clearing. And away he goes, right on his heed, he yelled, then turned and ran back into the battle. The Nakmak feagles couldn't be trodden on or squeezed. They worked in groups, running up one another's backs to get high enough to punch an elf, or for preference, bash it with their heads. And once anyone was down, it was all over by the kicking. There was some method in the way the Nakmak feagle fought. For example, they always chose the biggest opponent because, as Rob anybody said later, that makes them easier to hit, you can. And they simply didn't stop. It was that which wore people down. It was like being attacked by wasps with fists. It took them a little while to realise that they'd run out of people to fight. They carried on fighting one another for a bit anyway, since they'd come all this way, and then settled down and began to go through the pockets of the form.
in case there was any loose change. Tiffany stood up. Ah, weel, no a bad job, though I say is it myself, said Rob anybody, looking around. A very neat fight, and we didn't even have to resort to using poetry. How did you get into the nut, said Tiffany. I mean, it was a nut. Only way we could find them, said Rob anybody. There's got to be a way that fits. Tis difficult work navigating in dreams. Especially when you're a wee bit, said Daft Woody, grinning broadly. What? You've been drinking? said Tiffany. I've been facing the Queen, and you've been in a pub. Ach, no, said Rob anybody. You can that dream with a big party, when you had that pretty frock on, uh, We got stuck in it. But I killed the drone. Rob looked a little shifty. Weel, he said, we didn't get out as easily as you. It took us a wee while. Until we finished all the drink, said Daft Willie, helpfully. Rob glared at him. You didn't have to put it like that, he snapped. You mean the dream keeps on going, said Tiffany. If you're thirsty enough, said Daft Willie. And it wasn't just a drink. There was can of beers as well. But I thought if you ate or drink in a dream, you stayed there, said Tiffany. Aye, for most creatures, said Rob, anybody. Not for us, though. Booses, banks, dreams, tis all the same to us. There's nothing we can't get in or out of. Except maybe pubs, said Big Jan. Oh, aye, said Rob, anybody, cheerfully. Getting out of pubs sometimes causes a certain amount of difficulty. I grant you that. And where did the Queen go? Tiffany demanded. Ach, she did an off ski as we so as soon as we arrived, said Rob anybody. And so should we, lady, afore the dream changes, he nodded at Wentworth. Is this the wee Ben? Ach, what a nose full of bogies. Wanna sweetie, shouted Wentworth, an automatic sweetie pilot. Well, you canny hot none, shouted Rob anybody. And stop snivelling, and come away with us, and stop being a burden to your wee sister. Tiffany opened her mouth to protest and shut it again when Wentworth, after a moment of shock, chuckled. Funny, he said. Wee man, wee wee man. Oh dear, said Tiffany. You've got him started now. But she was very surprised nonetheless. Wentworth never showed this much interest in anyone who wasn't a jelly baby. Rob, we got a real one here, a pixie called out. To her horror, Tiffany saw that several of the Knack Knack Feagles were holding up Roland's unconscious head. He was full length on the ground. Ah, that was the laddie who was rude to you, said Rob, and he tried to hit Big Jan with a hammer too. That wasn't a clever thing to try. We shall, what shall we do with him? The grasses trembled. The light was fading from the sky. The air was growing colder too. We can't leave him here, said Tiffany. Okay. We'll drag him along, said Rob anybody. Let's move right now. Wee wee man, wee wee man, shouted Wentworth gleefully. He'd be like this all day, I'm afraid, said Tiffany. Sorry. Run for the door, said Rob anybody. Can you no see the door? Tiffany looked around desperately. The wind was bitter now. See the door, Rob anybody commanded. She blinked and spun around. Er, uh, er, uh, she said. The sense of a world beneath that had come to her when she was frightened of the Queen. It did not turn up so easily now. She tried to concentrate. The smell of snow. It was ridiculous to talk about the smell of snow. It was just pure frozen water, but Tiffany always knew when she woke up if it had snowed in the night. Snow had a smell like the taste of tin. Tin did have a taste, although admittedly it tasted like the smell of snow. She thought she heard her brain creak with the effort of thinking. If she was in a dream, she had to wake up. It was no use running. Dreams were full of running. But there was one direction that looked thin and white. 